Okay. Um, I am I am not caught up on the on the last session. I know that there was I, I imagine there was a recording, but I haven't had time to look at it. So coming in blind from okay. the last session. I can, where, uh, I can uh, catch you up. Could, okay. A couple of significant things. You do remember when you left off is that you just you were you were someplace else and it was night and it was forest. Mm -hmm. And that guy we had, gone through a, we had gone through a gate in the dungeon and mm -hmm. um, arrived outside somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, met sort of a sort of a wizard who had who had asked us to. He summoned help. you. He cast a spell. Yes, he, he completed yes. a ritual. Well, of course, he summoned us <laughs> through the gate to this place, and and we arrived. And he he asked us to help him recover his family home that was being um, squatted on for the last millennia or so by by some ne'er do wells. So that's yep. that's what I remember. Last. That was the deal. Yep, and then. Um... And then he looked over the, your scroll, and he was explaining it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that conversation continues. He actually, that's what I want to say. Like, he, he busted out his tea set, and he starts brewing some tea um, while the guys are, you know, doing whatever they do in camp. And he pulled out, like, his, I don't know, like, his instruments. It's kind of like, um, you know, those circular globes that you see out of brass from what the sextons and the sextons whatnot. and things but this is a little different you know it has a triangle that pulls out and, and so he's going he's giving you he i forget what he calls it he calls it um uh his uh his uh, arcana compass mm -hmm. and uh it was a useful tool and he first learned to use it when he went to oxram academy when he was a lad and it's so it, he uses that to help explain but his explanation um opens your mind uh the vastness of magic and what you're playing with. And he explains that it seems that you have a natural affinity for elemental magic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that your pursuits there would probably be rewarded. No, it's 8,000. Oh, what's that? Ocho, Ocho mill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, nah. I'm just a poor ranger from Avaron. I don't do division. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. But you know you know what beetles are good to eat? Well so does Rourke. No, don't eat the beetles. So Rourke and and the Ranger and the Scout <laughs> can talk about Did you roll another one? I do. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> ah, um... the whims of fate. The whims of fate. Every roll tells a story, Stu. Yeah. Veradel, the fragile assassin. <laughs> yep. Now you can see why I took up the work of assassin. Long okay. range, shadow, not seen. <laughs> death at a distance, death up close, unseen. You always wear okay, deodorant. I on, on one, one <laughs> So we're a group of two. We're a group of six now. Is that right? Yep. There's three folk, three locals from Valater. Uh, not Valatera, Averone that showed up. That's where the other placers are. Okay, great. Um, and, and and character character wise, um, I'm Rark. I'm playing a druid. Uh, he wears a red floppy fez and worships the medlar tree. Um, I think Zola's the thief, right? Zola's dead. Zola's dead. Oh, Zola's <laughs> dead, man. <laughs> I can't keep up, Gabriel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whose bike is that, Zola? Who's Zo Where's Zola? Zola's dead. <laughs> Zola's, Zola's dead, baby. Dead. <laughs> I'm playing. <clears throat> I'm playing Cree. <clears throat> Cree, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, Stu, remind me of your character. Yeah, so uh, I'm playing Veridel. Uh, he is an assassin. Jonathan, you have a ranger, right? Yes, I'm a native of Averon. I'm Jake the Ranger, and I, I'm outside some manor, but I have a wicked hammer. Okay. And a wicked helmet. Mm. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> they seem I am to the go together. They seem peasant. to go together. It's... it's like a matching set. But you know, you notice they were they were separated in the tomb. Uh, wearing a metal helmet, and I have a two-handed maul. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. The helmet's a little big, but I look cool. 
Okay. The maw looks like some type of, uh, put it this way, a weapon that a pagan king would wield in battle. It's not like a tool. It's a weapon. Gotcha. And uh, Anders? Yeah, I'm, I play uh, Le Batard. I'm a, a, a Baronian uh, scout. So that's a, something like a mix of a ranger and a thief. Okay. So basically pretty good with the bow and outdoorsy stuff. And also I have some sneaky skills like tracking and open locks. Okay. Stuff like that. I don't have any cool weapons. I don't have any cool gear. <laughs> I st- checked the, the, the Pedigod's book for a god. Um, I will retrieve the book soon. It was this muscular guy. That's my god. Okay. okay. The petty god's so mechanic good. was specific to the world of rock. Is, is Aberon part of the dying earth? You have no idea. Okay. It's you, have this... no idea. You, you have no idea what time or place you are. You could have be... we seen that? And the sun hasn't risen yet, right? So we wouldn't necessarily see the dying sun yet. That is correct. And that's the other okay. thing. When morning arrives, um, the man is gone. He's not there anymore. Somehow okay. he packed up and left in the night. Okay. It's right before dawn, like like 4.30. So there's just almost barely enough light to see by. But it's been hanging in that position for hours now. For hours, the sun has not come up. It should be up by now, but it's always below the horizon. Giving that dark uh, 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 wee hours, small hours, and and it's not raining or anything. It's clear. Um, oh no, no! This morning there's a lot of ground fog. That's right. There's ground fog. Everything's shrouded. A slight. There's this. There is a rain going on. Everything's really gray and dark. For the fellows from Abaddon, is this? Normal? I mean, no, no. The person. ranger and the okay. scout clearly expect that the sun should have been up hours ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That That's not right. It'll be up soon. He keeps soon. on saying. I think. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> uh-huh. And I think that's it for the prep, yeah. Um, so... And Jay, you had, you had pointed out that there are a couple of new spells for Rark, Limwalking, Plant Lore, and Hughes. Are those in the core book or are they somewhere else? They are somewhere else. I said I was waiting for first name, Lord. <laughs> Lord Jankula Anselex. Jankula. Jankula. Like janky Ula. Cree, you yeah, got this. Just... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, are we just assuming Veridel was hanging out with Rark during the extra time he was spending with Lord Anselex? Yeah, if you care to. doesn't matter. Yeah, he's giving his little academic magic lecture. With his I was trying to explain the uh, the absence. Uh, you got lost in the woods, yeah. looking for a place to go, take your constitutional. So the manor, you're in front of the manor, and um, it's not it's not the the small ruined keep that you saw overnight the night during the night that he because he showed you where he wanted the house he wanted you to go into. That small keep portion is now intact and is just the south, southeast corner of a much larger manor. And um, I think Zol, uh, Cree made some lovely maps. If you wanted to post them up, if you had them, I should get those on the web. Uh, they are on the on the group. That'll give you a they look are. of the grounds. But he went up, Cree went up the second story along with um, Le Bata and... And while Cree was working on the window, the window got was smashed open and two um, um, gray, withered arms with black, dirty fingernails smashes out through the window and yanks them in. And then you see shortly, just right after that, um, Lavata jumps through the window after his friend. <laughs> so that's what you see guys see on the ground. What do you do? Yeah, I think I was below the window. They climbed up to the second floor and climbed in. And I'm just standing down below the window, muttering to myself, they're going to die. 
They're gonna okay. die. Okay. They're okay. gonna die. You've you've given up. <laughs> is anyone is anyone else taking any Ver, action or should Veridel, can you climb can you climb up or help us up? I mean how how difficult of a climb is it, Jay? Is it sort of like a lattice work outside the Yeah, yeah, it's not front a sheer, window. It's I mean, not a sheer just... place, so you get a one in six chance to climb it. Yeah. I think we um, we used like a like a gutter to climb up or I yeah. Do you remember? yeah, I think we did. And Rourke, you can easily climb up there, but I get uh yeah, you can climb up, but fuck it. Yeah, I'll, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll boost you up. I'll, I'll climb up the wall. Yeah, if we could figure a way to, like, all of us to climb up there, and then we can help. Okay, it'll create. take it'll take a few rounds to get up there. I'm sure it will. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. so back Let's to... Let's all go uh, in. We're all going to die, though. Back to... Uh, Game not... over, man! <laughs> La <Bata. laughs> and, um, and Cree. So, Cree, you got a talking to you by the... One of the... Uh, well, the bestial, bestial women. The other one is a bit taller and is talking to you, like uh, La Bater, and so and asks you, you know, so what's your story? Uh, pardon, Madame. Uh, we have come here with a proposition for you. The um, the room that you are in is obviously a library, but it it looks like it's been ransacked. Books and papers lie scattered about the room, and several bookcases have been knocked over. Cree went sliding through a bunch of papers and books before he came <laughs> to a stop. Uh, there's literally hundreds of books and papers, and that most of them are off the shelf. Um, so that, and so she says, "What's your story?" And you are talking yes. to, you are talking to Rixanda and Claret. And they are li look like librarians. They look like bestial <laughs> hags. One is short with wiry hair. The claret that's talking to you is much taller and, and lankier. Rick, uh, Rick Senda is, uh, is, is very gray. He's a gray pallor. And, uh, and uh, a claret has a, has a ill greenish pockmark hue that... Um, it seems to be weeping some kind of, I don't know, pus. Nothing S nice. Syrup, something. <laughs> yes. So I say that we have come uh, with a pro business proposition for them. Well, I hope your proposition includes dinner, because you don't look like much else used to me. Ah, but you see, ladies, I'm an expert chef. Ooh. Also, also, <laughs> not true. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah, we may uh, have but, news but for I, you. I also say that uh, downstairs, uh, we have a friend, a very powerful friend, who wants to uh, make business with you. And I'm referring to you there, Jacques. <laughs> the one who's given up perfect yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just trying to buy time here Wait, yeah yeah am i in are we in the house now no we're, we're climbing we're one climbing. at a time works okay. first but your friend over here he looks like he's going to be we'll have to use him for the main ingredient and rick oh! and rick is kind of poking tree and goes yep they're fresh but they offer a proposition <laughs> And then, very good with books. Always looking for the books. Always people coming for the books. No one finding the books. No one leaving with the books. You're free to search all you want. <laughs> but you won't find them here. Do we, do we know the specific books we're looking for? Yes, I will tell you the specific books you are looking for. The Liber Juratus Honoria and the Livery des Esperitus. Are you going to say that or no? <laughs> I don't think that my character knows about these books, right? Uh, no. Uh, yes, yes. Well, no, you don't. You know, because uh, Anselex described them that evening before you guys arrived. So I mentioned the books to the to the hags. <gasps> You dare think you'll take such prize possessions from this house? 
You are fools, oh. fools, I say. Because those books, as you see, are not in the library. They are in the secret room. <laughs> and they laugh. What makes you think that you would be able to find what we have been unable to turn up all these years? Oh, so you've been here looking for them too. Yes, they were taken from us! They have been uh, bound and can help you. They've been bound and removed from us. We cannot reach them. You must have been speaking to my brother. He put you up to this, didn't he? So are you you must be then uh Lady Asulex? Uh, and they start laughing again. <laughs> and Rixana goes, um Rixana goes, nah, I'm just the chambermaid. And Clarette is like we are just oh yeah, she says, We are just chambermaids here. Ha <laughs> The lady of the house is about her business. Most likely long journey through the sad shadow world. For she only she has access to it. And she left us you in charge of looking for those books? Gaha, we haven't looked for those books. In hundreds of years, there's no point. There's no point. We are the staff. We maintain the manor as the lady requires. And uh, Claret is now starting to um, is um, squeezing uh, la la bata your for your uh, your bicep, kind of giving a little friendly squeeze. <laughs> she says, "I think you need to talk to the chef immediately." <laughs> of course, so, uh, there's no way so you can get meaty. those books. He sent you on a fool's errand, don't you know? They're bound by powerful wizardry locks. Besides, you don't even know where the secret room is. How would you even try to get in? Oh, so you know, but you couldn't get in? I know where it is. If I could get in, I would have done it long ago. Because there's much to be discovered in the secret room. Mm. Ah, you have more friends! And uh, um, La Bata, while she was Claret squeezing your your um, your bicep, she gives an icy death-like grip and then throws you across the room away from the window. So you're kind of like sliding towards past Cree and out the door of the library <laughs> and into the hall. Um, Roar, so she's like super strong. <laughs> she feels really strong. Um, she just okay. grabbed you and flung you. The other one grabbed a Cree and pulled him through a window and tossed him across the room like so much matchwood. Um, and uh, so, Rourke, you see the ghoulish-looking um, house staff uh, talking with Cree, and you see uh, Labata getting tossed out of the room. Um, I'm I'm gonna light a torch as I kind of step through into the library. Oh, fan it in front of me. Do the do the hags do they step back or at all? Or uh, no, Clarette steps up to you. Stand you can, back, you can lady. Smell her. Stand back. We are on an errand from the from my brother. Your brother? Who's who would be your brother then? You were talking to. Jankilla, weren't you? He put you up to this. This fool's errand that's doomed you all. No, not Gankula. Lord Asulex. Ah, he with the torch so. towards her face. He hasn't walked these halls in a long time. Matter of fact, most of the Ancelex has a has. Because only one can live in the manor. Only one is the guardian of the gate to the shadow world. And who's that guardian now? I'm like fanning the torch in front of me, trying to get towards Cree and mm -hmm. Beto. And she's watching and she's talking to you and she smells really bad. Um, and what was the uh, sister's name again? 
Isabel Ancelex, Lady Ancelex. And they say she's um, she's away. She's most likely in the shadow world. Doing what she does there. Traveling between the realms. You see, the so, Ancelex have a passion for, let's say, locking each other out. It's only one can inhabit the house. But you're free to try. We'll show you the secret room, and if you fail, ha <laughs> ha. We have you. That's the deal, isn't it? And, uh, um, <clears throat> what, uh, Labata coming up the stairs, since you're in the upper gallery there. Um, there is another creepy lady, but she's coming up with a growling, reanimated, mangy mutt that was clearly dead, but now has a mockery of life. It's like, and she's, um, yeah, you're out. I guess it's called the viewing room. It's, um, it's a hallway. You, You can look into the back into the library. To the south, you can see some stairs going down, and and uh, to the west is open air. You're looking down. You can look down into like the the first floor from there, and then going north, uh, the corridor turns, and the lady with the dog gets, comes right up the stairs south, coming you know, and she's looking right at you, coming right, and she's stepping towards the entry door of the library with her <laughs> undead dog. Oh, I Stop. will. Whip out my trusty longbow and shoot her in the face. Wow. <laughs> That's happening. Okay. <laughs> um, she's, she's attacking me. No, she is. Uh, she's be- walking up the stairs with a dog. She's got it. The dog's on a leash. The dog's on a leash. Okay, as, so. As I see uh, Labato La start slinging his bow, I. I shout at the um, at one of these <laughs> hags. I'll take you. We'll take you up on that offer. Show us this secret place that the Ancelexes have have sequestered their treasures, their mysterious books, and we will recover them for the Lord. You're most welcome to try. And do you hear that, sisters or not, sisters, ladies? They're going to try. They take us up on the offer, and they all like, yeah. <laughs> um, so you walk, uh, come this way. So you walk out of the library. You go north and immediately east down a corridor. Um, and right where the exterior wall of the east is, because you got some windows and those bay windows, you turn north. Um, you pass a small room filled with um, it's a gallery. This room looks down on a uh, a chapel on the first floor. This gallery offers additional seating. You walk by it. Um, is is the chapel is that can we see is it in disarray or anything or does it look well maintained or is it Oh, let's see. Dark. I do have, I do have, I can tell you that. Uh, you do not know who the chapel was is dedicated to. Mm-hmm. Um, are, uh, are Jake and I caught up at this point to the group? Yeah, you're in the room. Okay. So I have some things the... I want to ask these ladies. Is one nearby? Yeah, there's two in the room with you. But, I mean, we'll, we'll backtrack a little bit because we are moving through the house. But if you had something you wanted to do in the room, let me know and I'll see if I'm interested in it. Oh, I just want to talk to them. Well, do you talk to them while you're walking through the house? Listen, both of you, how many ladies are there? Three. One's got a uh, an undead dog on a leash. <clears throat> Okay, I say the three of you are the most disgusting, vile women I have ever seen in this fair land. Um, and I have something to tell you that uh, Le Batard and I, and I point to him, are on a quest to slay the beast, and we are probably the most ill-equipped persons for this job. Uh, we are cowards. We leave our friends to die in tombs. We don't bury them. Um, but I, 
somehow have the um, bravery to ask such vile specimens, uh, do you know anything about the beast? This is what we are trying to uh, slay. The beast, the beast, the beast. There's many beasts. There's many beasts here, there, and everywhere. You're looking. For I must the say, beast your Averone? voice Averone. is horrible to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> and they kind of laugh. They dig it. Yeah, they suspect. And, uh, they suspect. Um, it's uh, some abbey originates from a certain abbey there, they believe. And I will say, if you touch me like you touch Le Batard, I will probably smash your foot with this hammer because you are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we found the appetizer. This one's a little <laughs> sub-spicy. The church is in disarray and neglect. Uh, it uh, mm -hmm. has the appearance okay. of... Um, did I see? Uh, 13th century. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a rededicated to a 13th century. Um, and, uh, oh, Labata and uh, Jake. You recognize it as a uh, um, that it's uh, dedicated to the bishop Bishop of Zemes X I M E S. I think that's a city on the map. Whose canon canonization was controversial owing to long-standing rumors that he was a black magician rather than a pious son of the church. Hmm. Um, so after passing the gallery, so the the. The, the 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 old ladies they are um, guiding us through the house to the secret room, right? Yeah, one's in front and two are in back, and the one in back okay. and one of the ones in back has got the dead dog walking, growling, okay. sl slobbering. It's got more than ravens. <clears throat> so yep. you pass the gallery, then on the west you pass um, stairs going down. Uh, there's a door on your right. You pass that, and you come into a 20 foot by 20 foot square area where it's just the wall goes 10, 20, 30, 40 feet, feet on the north, and on the east end, there's a door that would go north, and that would bring you to the corner of the house, and they present the, um, the blank wall. And she says, the portal is here. And the room is just beyond. But what? But I can conceive of nothing that you mangy adventurers and murder hobos might have with you to penetrate such a powerful, powerful, locked, magically locked room. And you said that behind the wall, there's this secret room and the books are in there? She's particularly saying the door to the secret room is through this wall and will give you entrance into the uh, the secret room, which they call the sanctum. Whether yeah, it's really you know, attached talk. to the house or not is really up for debate. Hmm. Uh, at the moment kind of passed. Jake, are you going to let her talk about your penetration ability like that? <laughs> So, uh, listen, ladies, obviously we don't need to get in there because you all deal with this black magic uh, Bishop of Zemes. So there's plenty of magic here already. Just point us in the right direction. Through the wall. Get at it. Show us you got what it takes. Or all it's right, a stew pot for you. I'm pretty sure I'm about to swing my hammer at the wall. Hmm. Okay, they don't stop you. All right, I'm going to take a swing. Let's give him plenty of room. Plenty of room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you smash into the plaster, and the Venetian plaster. Um, you know, and it cracks like a regular wall. And when you pull your hammer out, it's like you've never, you never struck it. Hmm. And they laugh at you, of course. Hmm. 
Well, Rourke, they I, don't... I encourage you, since we don't always play fairly regularly, to look at your equipment and what you have. Because uh, Jankula and Select said that, you know, when he summoned you that, you know, he doesn't know how you're going to, you know, succeed. But he knows his summoning spell um, brings brings those who have the ability to aid him in this in the object of this quest. You saw that portable portal maker thing that we used? Is that, <laughs> is that what you're referring to? That's not. Or maybe right. this. That was either. Maybe a... this. Maybe the scroll. Uh, yeah. What I do you have on another... the scroll? Hang on. Let me grab a. It's on another no... uh, notepad. Okay. You see Rourke right rummaging back. through his through his right, stuff. Right. I'm going, Hold on. Back. Hold on. Hold on. Hold everything. <laughs> hurry! 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 Breakfast is soon. What are you serving for breakfast? You. <laughs> what else? You for starters. Oh. So are all three of them just hanging out, watching? Yeah, two are. They're they're kind of around you. Two are on your left, and one is on the right, uh, which would be Sanda, right up against the wall. You know, you guys are having a discussion in front of the wall. I mean, everyone is is you know melee melee range is your. You're real close to each other, so if a fight breaks out, it's immediately initiative, and you know who what ha you know who knows what happens. They don't seem to be carrying any weapons. Uh, I'd probably say like I would look at them and say that you know you're welcome to attend to to your you know usual business. We can uh, show ourselves around, and you know our methods might take some time here. Oh no, we'll conclude business here first. <laughs> said you could get in let's see it time's a wasting when when jake asked uh, asked them about the the beast uh, they said uh, they mentioned this abbey does this abbey has anything to do with uh with the church the that we or that we passed uh, but the the room dedicated to this uh, sand yeah Zena the Zenas. bishop of Zenas X I N E S mm -hmm. what is your question if the abbey is uh, related with this uh, with this bishop uh yes it is the short answer yes Mm -hmm. Do we know anything else about this bishop? Is he famous in these parts, or uh, he's probably the most powerful person in uh, in the kingdom of Averon, which Still is living? just one one kingdom of uh, of uh, seems like a, like the uh, Jacques and Labata. You know that you're the you're the country that you live in or the nation, the realm in general is called the land of a thousand towers. And where you guys is in the land of a thousand towers known as Avaro. Is this person still living or ruling? Or is it somebody powerful from the past? No, no, it's someone, it, the, the place looks like it's from way the past, but it is a current, the, 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 if it's the same one, it seems to be they're referring to a bishop that currently is in ruling. Abbey of Paragon. My... What was that, Jay? The Abbey of Paragon. Okay. And the abbot, the abbot of that abbey is Theophile Paragon. Paragon. And that, um, so that's the that's the abbey where the beast or the beast originates from that's but, where that's where the the ghouls suggest you might find some answers okay um and uh jake you know that the the abbot of that abbey has been on a uh, a tour of the villages in Averone 
um, trying to ease the suffering of the poor. And it, and it occurs to you that um, as his uh, as his retinue has passed um, some of these some of these villages and and, and stayed and left, that uh, those are where the uh, the slashed and dismembered bodies would have been found. And how far away is that roughly? Um, let me look at the map of Averon. Is it is it listed? Yeah, yeah, Paragon. Do you see that on the province of Averon map? It's got the number sixty next to it. It's it's um, it's kind of like north northwest of of Zimes on a path. Oh, I'd have to dig the map up. Okay. okay. So it, well, I'll tell you how many miles it is. If uh, right. each one of these hex is twelve miles, nineteen hexes times twelve make it twenty. So what? Two hundred forty miles away is where the uh. is where the abbey is. But he's been traveling. The the abbot is not at the abbey. He's been traveling that route I gave you that you were following. That is actually his route that he's been taking on his holy mission to ease the suffering of the poor. He's out in the country meeting the people. So he's probably very close. You would have to go back to a village to see if you can find out where the abbot is in his party is expected to travel next or arrive. Listen, you weirdos from another place. We have important mission elsewhere at the Abbey of Paragon, and it is quite a walk. Can you please open the door so we can continue moving? Uh, obviously, my methods are not useful. If we had the but, ability uh, to get in, if we or my lady had the ability to get into the secret room, to get into the sanctum through the secret door, we would have. No, I think he's... he's I'm talking about that. these guys. <laughs> and I'm saying this all out loud. Okay. You know, I'm only here from the goodwill of Cree here, who happened to join us in our tomb raiding where we left our companion to die. Uh, well, I like your style, and then Claret shoves you in the chest, and you get pushed into a chair in this chamber that's like up against the wall, you know, like a sitting chair. Boom! <laughs> He goes, enough <laughs> for you, silence. And they turn back to Cree. Our patience is wearing thin. So, Jay, I had I just had a look at my notes. Um, maybe a scroll that I don't have noted here for you some reason. You do have a scroll. You do have a scroll. You got the scroll from, I want to the... say, Soj King. Uh, uh, the caves of the strangle. Right. I think that's okay. that sounds. And there was three spells on it, and I'm not going to look them all up right now. But I know you got three spells, and one of them is phase door. Okay. Okay. So, what are the other spells that are on the scroll, or was phase door the only one that I was able to, no, to no, decipher? Was... Or maybe with the help of Lord Ancilex? Yeah, that was your discussion through uh, over dinner. Mm -hmm. He gave you a handle on how to um, cast these spells by reading them off the scroll. Okay. Um, of course, you couldn't practice that. Right. Um, so, who knows if it'll work? Right. Uh, or fighting oh, the hags. The other one, I believe, was, unless it's on your spell list already, unearing direction. That might be helpful in coming back. Phase door, phase door, wondering direction. God. It's, it's, it escapes me that third one. I don't see it on my notes either, but I have written it down a couple of times. Was it in the Discord, maybe? Yes. Yes. All right, so let's let's push these hags back so Rark can, can 
produce this scroll with a flourish and attempt casting this mm -hmm. phase door spell. Yeah, when you, if we don't know it, we have no idea what it will do. <clears throat> when you um, when you pull out the scroll, give us some place, ladies. Let our sorcerer work. And they have oh, to. They have to back up because at least Rick Sand is like right over your shoulder, like putting her gnarly gray, uh, blackened fingernail hand on your shoulder, like, ooh, what magic do you bring to the House of Angels? And then you're like, spread out, spread out, give me some room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To, uh, so clearly, I, I think they would also want to get in here, right? I mean, are we concerned about what happens if it does work? <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, <laughs> are, are we going to be fighting them for access to whatever's in there? Can we, can we, can the rest of us, uh, like, like form a, like a line between, um, uh, Rick Sanda, Rick Sanda uh, hugs the wall to the north, right of the door, Claret, and the other chambermaid are, what are they going to be? If the square, if the room is 20 by a 20 by 20 square. And you are standing in the in the northeast square, looking north at where the door is supposed to be. Rixanda is to the right, down the hall, just a few paces, like five feet, leaning against the wall. And then behind you, that the uh, the where you came into the room, which was at the top of the stairs that go down. Um, that's where the other two chamber ghastly chambermaids with the dog are. So two of them are kind of like near the door out back the way you came. And Rixanda is against the wall to Rourke's right. And she steps back to let you, they all kind of like step back to let you cast your magic. I'm going to load my heavy crossbow on the pretext that we don't know what's beyond the door, the secret door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. And they kind of laugh. It's been a long time. We forget too. Yeah, I'd pull out my bow as well. Oh, I'm going to put my feet up on a footstool and lean back in this chair she pushed me into. Okay. <laughs> Rourke. All right, well, let's give this a shot, the face door spell. Well, you're in good luck because I, did, I was going to take some time and read up on the magic tables and how they work for Dungeon Crawl Classics. Oh, uh-huh. But... I didn't don't do that. And I didn't, and I don't have any <laughs> of that material, but I wanted to give, if there was a chance that you screwed up the spell, I was going to use that kind of approach, but I didn't. Yeah, so it's a it's like a difficulty check um, modified by level and, and stat, like intelligence or wisdom, depending on the class. And then uh, usually... 10 plus or 10 pluses are successes, but then they're scaled successes off of that. Uh, yeah, that's not happening. You get lucky. Your magic is magic, and if you can always rely on it. You're just gonna, it's gonna work. Oh, okay. And phase door, I think. Where did I get that? That is uh, from the first edition player's handbook of D and D. I have none of my books. Okay, handy. and I will read that to you. Great. I got it here. Yeah. When the spell is cast, the magic user attunes here her body, and a section of a wall is affected as if by a past wall spell. Okay, now, my murder hobos, let Uncle Dungeon Master tell you a story of a long, misty past known as the 70s. There was a book release called The Player's Handbook. It was amazing. It's uh, when this spell is cast, the magic user attunes he or her body. And a section of wall is affected as if by a password spell. The face door is invisible to all creatures, save the spellcaster, and only he or she can use the space or passage the spell creates. Disappearing when the face door is centered, and appearing when it's exited. The face door lasts one usage for every two levels of experience of the spellcaster. It can be dispelled by the spell magic from a higher level magic user or by several low-level magic users, casting in concert, blah, blah, blah. So I guess... Okay, the, the magic user tunes his or body and, and a section of the wall is affected by a pass wall spell. 
The phase doors are visible all creatures save the spellcaster, only she can use the space or patches the spell creates. Disappearing when the phase door is entered. Yours is not invisible. Okay. Um, and you can see into uh, an old but richly appointed like studio or sanctum, and everyone else, including the uh, the, the ghoul maids, are just seeing the uh, the circular or the door like aura that you have cast on the wall, but they can't see through through like you can. Can we see through? Nope. Nope. Who can see through? Rourke. Uh, just Rourke. Rourke the, the spellcaster. The druid. Yeah, so Rick Sanda is saying, did it work? Did it work? Okay, she's actually got, she's drooling a little bit. Tell me it didn't work. Tell me it didn't work. I'm concentrating. I'm concentrating. Um... What I'd like to do is like usher, try to usher all the PCs through and leave the the ghoul, the hags on the other side. You cannot. It only works for you. Let's put it this way. Let's me. put it this way. At this point, you can only create the phase door for yourself. Right. And it's uh, it allows you to penetrate magical barriers. And scrolls in this world, are in your setting. Yeah, are they one use only type of thing? Does the yes, yes, does yes, the, the magic the scribing kind of fades from the scroll yep, as yep, yep. as Rark steps through into the library. Okay, see if I can't find a way to open it from the other side for and it, so uh, for the, and then uh, the the party. and then the ghouls kind of shriek and go, ah, whoa, he's in, he's in. But will he come out? And then uh, uh, you don't know this, of course, Rex, but. Uh, uh, um, there's Claret, Rixanda, and Isabel. Isabel, there's a uh, one of those hourglasses on a shelf in this sitting area, and she flips it over. He goes, I hope he finds what he's looking for before the sand runs out. Why? <laughs> Because you'll be trapped in there forever, and then we'll devour you all for dinner. <laughs> so uh, the room is decorated with images of leering demons and other blasphemous things. There are many implements that you um, would believe would be used in conjuration, summoning, and perhaps necromancy. So those are okay. rare, very real magical tools, um, but, you know, steeped in evil. Right. Um, anyone interested in demon worship would think of them as valuable. And it's like a sitting room space or like a like a study or what yeah it's called a sanctum it has a bay window a to sanctum. the north and it's 40 by 30 um and um does does it look like it's physically adjacent to the the other room that we came from or is this in another like dimension or you don't know like you just saw rourke step through the door a step through the wall where the glowing door frame, magical portal mm -hmm. was, you know, moving and writhing on the wall. And he just passed through. And that writhing and that wall thing still is there. So if you wanted to try to go through it, you could. And you said there was a bay window to the north. What does it look out on to, Jay? It looks on to the north grounds. Of the of the manor, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yep. And you're seeing. Um, it's not looking out onto some demonic plane or anything like that. No, it's, no. You're looking on the okay. bracken in the in the weedy tall grass and this in the unkept stable before that it go, turns to hedge maze and wall. And are there any other exits from this room, or just the the one the phase door that I crossed? There is no other 
exit out of this room that you can see. Okay. And are, are there, is there any furniture or accoutrements in the room or is it just like a, like a, um, this kind of weird demonic visages carved into the walls, ceilings and floors? Um, no, it's, there's not much of like sitting, like chairs and couches, um, In addition to the aforementioned implement, there's a collection of 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 books and texts on mm -hmm. shelves, um, and besides the numerous magical herbs and chemicals scattered out the room, there is a corpse on the floor. A corpse. <clears throat> I'll uh, and it, crouch. And it looks mummified. Crouch. Crouch inserts the body. Is it male or female? Is it Here's adorned? Here's male dressed in a silk robe covered with occult symbols. Uh, there's a gold amulet around uh, his neck and a ring on his hand. Um, and also in the center of the room is, a, is an unbroken circle. And there's a, a really strange and hideous demon in the middle of it. <laughs> Trapped there. <laughs> Uh, 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 okay. Saying that if you, um, uh, is that it knows what you're looking for, and if you and if you break the circle, um, uh, Bayamon, the demon will show you where the books are. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did, uh, so I, I, as as casually as I can, I try to ignore that demon, <clears throat> and um, muttering over or calling to him over my shoulder. Did you kill that man there? As I like scan the mm -hmm. the bookshelves looking for no. the books that oh, we well, were. No, he, he killed himself. He took the himself. final journey to everlasting life. And what is your purpose here on this plane? I have beast? no purpose. I need to leave. The fool cr completed the spell and he didn't give me a task before he offed himself. So I've been stuck here for a very, very long time. Your reward will be great. Just name it and let me go. A moment, a moment. I, and I, so nothing in the bookshelves that looks like the books that we were searching for. And are there any, are there any, um, Oh yeah. Yeah, there is. You'd know what you're looking for. The, the books are in there. The books are there. Yeah. Um, yep. Because uh, uh, the Jankula Antelex described them to you in detail, so that you guys would know what you're looking for. So it, I mean, it, it takes some time. Are, sure. Are you lifting off the amulet in the ring, or are you leaving them on the corpse? I'm ignoring it for now. I wanted to see if find the books first before I made a decision about what to do with the corpse. Okay, you find the Liber Geratus Honoria and the Liberi des Esperitas. Um, it looks to be written in a language you don't know by a magician by the name of Honorius of Thebes. And the Liberi des Esperitas. And you actually can kind of read it. It has some similarities to Romerian. Um, okay. And it looks like a, an extensive catalog of demonic beings. Uh, flipping through it quickly to his, what is your name, Beast, as I'm looking through this, this catalog of demons trying to see if there's anything that's closely resembling what this thing is. Bailman of the Black Brook, running cold. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to do this fast so we could get That's okay. back That's together. Okay. Um, so, Jay, I've I pulled the books from the shelves, and I, I have them, or I was yeah, just yep. looking at them. Yeah, okay. you're, you're examining them. You're examining the title. You can see the language is written in. Um, All right. Um, 
I will, uh, I'm going to treat with the demon. I have a proposition for you. Okay. And uh, I'll free you from the circle if you drive those, if you drive the enemies of Lord and select from this house, allowing them never to return. Hmm. And providing safe passage for myself and my companions out of this dreadful place. Let's mm -hmm. see, he's contemplating with his, his gabby claws and his. And his while I'm making wind. this, while I'm making this bargain, I'm removing the ring and the amulet from the corpse. Okay. Okay. Um, and it has and, three glowing eyes and just this real big crooked mouth that goes across the side of its mouth and then up vertical, kind of making this huge backwards L, which is really unnerving. Oh, it's got three globular eyes in its belly near its <laughs> loincloth. Um, he says, the, the demon says, done. The demon, the demon says, done. Mm -hmm. And what assurance do I have that once I free you, you don't devour me and return to your own plane? The word of a demon. The demon's word binds. A demon's, a demon's bond? <laughs> <laughs> it binds. My promise is a, is a binding one. I am compelled. I will not be able to leave this plane until I fulfill my task. And now I have a task. <clears throat> okay. And let's seal this this bond in blood, and I'll I'll cut my palm. Ooh. Okay. And uh, make to extend it through the. You can't get you can't get for... through it. There's, oh, there's is a, that right? When you, okay. you can't see it, but there's a physical force going okay. up around the, the circle. Like it, it can't get out. It, you can't touch right now. Is it enough just to disturb the? The markings or the chalk on the floor to, to break the yeah, circle. Yeah, baby, how you do that? Just break the circle of chalk, and you and you can step out, and it can step out. All right, let's. I'll do that. Okay. As I like, as I like, prop the corpse up in front of me, you know, making ready to like drag it out through the face door. <laughs> to the rest <laughs> of the. Um, the. Uh... Bayam and the demon gives an exalted cheer as he steps up out of the circle and onto the floor. Um, its big crooked mouth bites the corpse in half and spits it out. And that's for not completing mm. my task, giving me a task <laughs> before you expired, you bastard. <laughs> um, so, I will go and um, <laughs> defeat your enemies that... Uh, that surrounds you in this dangerous house. I, I have something I'd like to say before this, while while it's going on. Yeah, what? So, so we're in the the library and he's gone. You're in a you're so in I'm, a you're in a sitting room. Chapel. Not a chapel. You're in a sitting room on the second hole. floor in yeah. the north corner of the building. The uh, the northeast corner of the building. The library was in the southeast corner. And he he's been gone for a few minutes and. I'm leaning back in the chair, and I can't help but say, Lebatard, you know, if he doesn't come back, maybe we should figure out our exit strategy. I have some oil. Perhaps we just start pouring oil around the house to burn it down, um, <laughs> because there's not too much for us for here, and, you know, he's probably not going to come back. I can start lighting, you know, drizzling the oil <laughs> everywhere if you'd like. Do you, I mean, that's just one plan. While you're, while you're saying this? Good. Um, one one painting after another on the wall falls with a loud crash. Obviously, it needs to be condemned and burned down. <laughs> um, and when That'd Isabel right turns to look at uh, the pictures that fell and like says, "Look what you did." Um, Jacques, you get to look at the back of her head, and it, it, it looks like it has a cleaver wound. Very old, but it, mm. it would normally kill someone. It's a big cleaver wound in the back of her head. Uh, 
You women are disgusting. <laughs> and then, um, and then this, uh, oh, I can't show it to you because my camera is captured by the recording. Uh, flag it to Discord or push it to me or something? Uh, I was uh, just holding up a book to show the picture of it. Oh, and I haven't, gotcha. I haven't scanned it yet. But, um, it's ugly. It's, it's humanoid. Its neck is elongated and it's got that rhomboid flesh head with the big crooked mouth with sharp teeth. It below the long slender neck. It has two very small dragon like wings, um, and a mottled, uh, pot bellied chest, loincloth and two arms and legs that look reptilian. And, it, oh. and if this if this thing can grin, you're not sure, but it sounds happy. But <laughs> you know, its grin is is hideous. Um, and it's so this guy, th this thing is just stepping out of the base door. Now it is, yeah. I'm telling Rourke what it sees. It steps out of the circle uh. and then goes to the wall which you <laughs> entered and walks through. Wait, wait. So who who comes out first? The demon. The demon. <laughs> There's this. <laughs> the demon comes out first. Demon comes out. The house staff shrieks. <laughs> um, and it's initiative time. Everybody outside. Do I even have a chat? Do I have a chat to stick? There is one in the new hangouts. Chat. I got it. There's I missed the chat. Okay. I got I got chat access. Send a mustard one to everyone in the chat. I roll a four for initiative. Jonathan Davis, initiative 12. How do you get that? Oh, what do we roll? 1d6. Let me try that again. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, There's no bonuses, right? Uh, your, your dexterity Six. gives you a bonus if you have it. Oh, okay. Nice. So four, four, and four. Veradel, your last. And um, I guess the um, uh, the um, the three ghoulish house staff are gonna go on four as well. So, being that that we're trying to be player focused, we have Cree and Jake up first. What is your action? What about Anders? He has initiated. Oh, seven. Sorry. Seven. I did not see that wily scout. What is your action? <laughs> Can you refresh so me see. on what the face looks like? Sorry? What, uh, say Jay, say you you're in a hotel the... walking to mm -hmm. the elevator and you're in the lobby. It's just bigger than the hallway going into it and then turning right and going out of it. Okay. And uh, that's all. And then, you you know, like in an elevator lobby, you put a couch, you put a chair, you put a little table with a black magic statue and mm -hmm. um, and your family members in certain stages of decay on the pictures. And there you go. And this thing steps through the wall. Yep. Some wilted Does flowers. Does it say anything? Does it say anything? Yeah, it does. Finally, I am free. You all must perish. And then the pack is completed. Um, and he's it's staring at you all with his slavering jaws and its small little clawed hands. On its hot belly. And the slender neck is holding up this ungodly rhomboid large head. <laughs> Uh, and we haven't heard the discussion before, right? Because we couldn't hear through the wall. You didn't know anything of this. Yep. Yep. And I need you to say, and decide I'm not, quick. I'm not the wisest of men, so I think I will fire at this demon. Okay. I shoot it. In the pot belly. It's got an AC of 16. I roll 11 plus 4, 15. That's a miss. Funk! Goes into the wall. Funk! Um. Maybe I have a plus one because of the short range? Yes, you do. 
isn't that the thing? Then it's a hit. <laughs> We've got a hit. Uh, roll one d six. Probable hit. A hit. Roll one d six. Yay! Because it's a short bow, right? I have a long bow. Long bow. Let's look at the basic. So one d eight. Okay, one d eight. Yep. Yep. And I do a full two damage. Take that, demon. <laughs> okay. Who's next? I will go with Cree. Okay. Yeah, he probably like turns around when he hears the demon uh, exclaim finally free and he gonna let go the the, the heavy crossbow he doesn't <laughs> he, he, he he doesn't see a a, a rock so yeah yeah he, he fears for the worst of course of course <laughs> what else is there to fear but the worst uh three no it's a miss fearing he just fearing for the best <laughs> just doesn't have the same feel yeah <laughs> okay Jake, Jacques, Jack. Uh, what exit? What exits are there? Uh, there... <laughs> okay. Let me get to the blow up of this section of the house. Okay, it's a twenty by twenty room. In the southeast corner, heading south, is an open archway to the top of the stairs and the hallway that leads to the gallery and eventually the library. And in the northeast corner, heading west, uh, east, is a short corridor that ends in a window, and to the north of it is a door. And that's the, the side of the house. I'm going to run that way. Okay. I'm, I'm freaked out, and I'm yelling, I, I'm getting out of here. This is stupid. Y'all are stupid. This is all stupid. And these ladies are ugly. Okay. Uh, next up is the demon... Which poor Colette Claret is standing in front of. Okay, rolls the D twenty again. Her armor class. A C A C A C. And hits Claret. With a, it reaches its head down with a large bite, and Claire gives a screech and dodges out of the way, and uh, the demon's um, jaws appear to snap shut on empty air. Mm. But there is, you can see that there is a trickle of ooze coming from her shoulder. Now, Isabel. Releases the reanimated dog, which goes tearing after Jake. <laughs> um, and Rixanda attacks the demon and misses. Claret attacks the demon and hits. Roll her damage. And, uh, yep, she claws its back. Um, and that's it. I think we're rolling initiative again. Oh, I gotta go. Gotta go. Oh, <laughs> I always forget. Um, so, uh, I think I would be looking, uh, focusing on the hags and Isabel. Um, I like to try to get into, like, an advantageous position. Um, so Isabel sent the dog. Where is she like in the relation to the dog situation? You guys are all in a room face to face with just mere steps between you. Face to face. Yeah, I mean, um, the room is, is 20 by 20, but there's what, six people in it? <laughs> in, a, in a dead dog? And a demon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is asses and elbows right now. Fireball. <laughs> Where's Rourke? Um. 
Yeah, I guess I would probably. Uh, oh gosh, what am I gonna do? I will. If if. It... So Isabel didn't actually get in melee with anyone and just sent the dog. Can I can I throw a dagger at her without risking hitting someone else, or is yeah, it still too yeah, cramped? Okay. All right, let me do that. There's always you roll a one. There's a risk of stomping. Oh, by the way, guys. Also, another house rule. Um, monsters and creatures can fumble, but they don't get max damage on a natural twenty. That's reserved for you guys. Heroes. Yep, for heroes. <laughs> yep. That's hero grade stuff right there. It's a 17 to hit. Roll damage. One damage. <laughs> I was going to say, what, Veridel hit something? But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> barely hit something. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Can somebody give me, let's see, there was 32. Uh, what was the total? You got one or two, Stu? Uh. My my initiative was three. I did one damage to Isabel. Okay. Okay. I get. Yeah, I got. I got. Uh, I got its correct hit points. What's left? Okay. I don't want to cheat you guys. Roll initiative. Uh, is Rark get an action this round, or yes, is yes, it? Yes. Uh, yes. What do you want to do? I'll step through the phase door, clutching the ch the books to my chest. You know, motioning to my companions, let's get out of here. Yeah, you run right into the back of the demon, but the hole closes behind you, so you bounce off him and back into the wall. Okay. Um, you know, so it was right there. Initiative. Like you, you can smell its body odor. You're like, Ugh! nose pressed into its scapula. All right. I'm. Uh, let's see. We're throwing initiative for the next round, right? Yep. Looks like I got two sixes, two fours, and a one, and a six. Okay, the two sixes, Rourke and Jake. Um, Your actions. I'll go I'm going to start running to the towards the library. I believe that's to the south. And uh, I will tell this demon will fight our battles for us. You know, trying to lead the party to the south. Oh, John, John. I ran to the Jake. northeast. Sorry, Jake. Yeah, well, you're Jake. You're running <laughs> actually. The is to the is the library to the south or to the north? To the south <laughs> and to the northeast is the you. You went to the northeast corner of the room, Jake, and run ran down the corridor east. The corridor goes directly east. It's like at the top of the room and going east, and then um, you know, and after thirty feet, twenty thirty feet stops at a bay window and a door to the north. And the bay window looks on the outside, but we were at Rourke. Rourke, you're running through the crowd and screaming for everyone to run for their lives, correct? Pretty much. Yeah, the demon, and that the demon will fight our battles for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, next on the block, Jake, what are you doing? I'm going to try and open that door and shut it behind me and hold it shut. Okay, and that gives the, the dog gets one free back attack while you're doing this. And hits over class 16. Uh, yes, hit. For six points of damage. Ow. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> what is? How many hit points do you have? One. Oh, so you're still standing. So uh, I have one left. One left. Okay, and you're also, you feel the strength ebb from your body. Reduce your strength by one. Perfect. And, but, but... <laughs> On the plus side, you now have a door between you and the dead dog. Is that permanently, or do I? You have no or... idea. Your hope, your hope, it doesn't leave a mark. I'm just gonna erase eleven and put ten. There we go. Great. I'm not gonna worry about it. All right. So I do I make it through the room? Yeah, yeah. And close the door. Yep. And you can hear it snarling on the side. <laughs> like my arm is bleeding. Ah. Okay. Then we're at the. Fours. So that's uh, Veridel and the enemy, and the enemies in the monster. Okay, Veridel, go first. I have. Oh, I have six. As okay, well. didn't see it. Thanks, Scout. Um, I will follow Rourke. Okay. Okay, that means uh, 
Isabel gets a back attack against you. No. Seven plus four is 11. Hit, I hit armor class 11. Yep, that's not a hit. <laughs> Lucky me. Lucky you, okay. <laughs> because I only have three hit points left. <laughs> and, uh, uh, okay, we've got... Uh, Jake, are you, we back to you now? No, you did your action. All the sixes are done. So it's the four. Veridel. Um, yeah, so I'd like to run as well. Um, what I'd like to try to do is basically just have my shield out and do like kind of a running charge through Isabel's space, basically trying to knock her off balance as I kind of walk, run by. Okay, that's a roll to hit. And if you fail, okay. you are stuck where you are. You do not disengage. Okay. Fair enough? Like, sure. you gotta, you gotta, it's basically making an attack and I want to see, instead of scoring damage, you score your objective. Mm. And you got to go okay. against a, and you're going against an armor class of uh, twelve. Okay. <laughs> that is an eleven. <laughs> so any strength mod or anything, Verdo? Or attack yeah. bonus? You get attack bonus for level, that, right? It was, it was a, a plus two, so nine. It was an eleven. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Veridel, Veridel's been very good with adding up his. Knowing what his bonuses are before he his mods are okay. He, he, I'm, he, I'm, he I'm calculates the number. barely fail. To, to <laughs> so you did fail. Thing. So Isabel, as you're coming to crescent, she's kind of pushed back, but now it's ripping your shield and spitting at you. I'll rip the flesh from your face. Huh. Um, right. And so she attacks you because it's her initiative. Right. Isabel has. Ooh, Natural 20, Ugh. but not the full, we're not doing the full max damage because I think that's only for right. you, so you get out of that. Um, and ooh, 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 say versus magic. All right. Uh, 15. I did roll over my save versus spells. Okay. She is trying to immobilize you. With her terror glance. Mm. But you resist it. All right. Um, and you're still taking damage. Oh, well. You feel that, <laughs> that, that you feel a chill as she's like reaching over and like trying and grabbing your throat. Um, and you take five points of damage as ice flows through oh. your veins. Oh. All right. Okay. Rick Sanda attacks the demon. She misses. And Claret attacks the demon. And misses. The demon can attack Brixanda or Claret and it attacks Claret and misses. Initiative. I didn't go. Oh, did you, Gabriel? Mm. Did you have an action? Oh, yeah, you're one. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sorry, I, you're the last I'm, one. Your last. Action. Thanks for um, keeping up with me. So the demon is engaged with a... With, uh, with two, a two ghouls, yes. With two? Yep, and Isabel is um, choking the life essence out of Veridel. Um, okay, I'm going to... Attack Isabel. Is that so it counts as a backstab or Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I take uh, my uh, what I have. 
dagger. I have a fancy dagger. And let's use the fancy dagger. You're using the fancy dagger? Didn't I tell you what that did? Yeah. No. I yeah, I did, know. but you don't remember. Instead of doing 1d4 points of damage, it does 1d6. Oh. And it's okay. not because it's mm. magical. It's just bitching. Was... It's just a bitching knife. I, <laughs> I saw I saw fancy on my card that she says, okay, let's use it because it was fancy. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. In, in a... oh, 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 nice. 17 plus a lot. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay so you hit. Roll damage. Okay, that's a D6. Let's go, let's go. The double damage for backstab? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the backstab? The we gotta do a bunch you can't assassinate a demon, but you or you get uh <laughs> can you assassinate? No, you're just a thief, so it's a backstab. Yeah, I'm a thief. So you double damage. Yeah, uh four damage. Hmm. Total. Okay. She turns on you. She's looking at you now. <laughs> and give him back to an assassin. <laughs> yep, so you reach out and work. stab with your long <laughs> knife in your cool belt buckle, demon belt buckle. Waste. Pull it from the demon belt and stab! I think we're rolling initiative again. I think we're mostly... We're all done. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel okay. needs an initiative roll, and I think that's all of it. Oh, okay, that's then it. we have our initiatives. Okay. Jacques, um, I'll tell you what is in the room since you're in a okay. new space. Um, mostly what's important to me is, is there a locking mechanism on my side of the door that I can see? Mm. Um, roll, a, uh, roll a d6. Tell me what you get. A four. Yes, it has a bolt. It has a key and All right, a bolt. I'm I'm going to slide the bolt shut. Um, is there a chair or anything I can topple in front of the door? You guys have to hold on for a second because a very important person is leaving the house right now. And I'll mm -hmm. be right back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're back. What were we doing? Eviscerating. Uh, initiative for round four, maybe. I think we've got our initiatives posted to the chat. Yep, we do. And I was talking with, with Jake and I was explaining the room, correct? And you said there was a deadbolt, so I slid the deadbolt and I was asking, are there is there any furniture that I can also use to reinforce the door to mm -hmm. like a chair, like a chair or push a bookshelf over? A half dozen chairs are found in this wood paneled room. I'm gonna grab the nearest chair and stick it under the door also. There's also two small tables. Uh just chair. I've seen that. That works. Okay, you got it. And, the, and yeah, and you hear the the dead dog scratching on the other side, all that stuff, right? I'm like, I'm like ble I'm bleeding and feeling all weak and. Yep. Yep. All right, what's this room look like? I just told you. Oh, okay. But I'll tell you, two two tables and half dozen chairs. Any wood, exits? Wood paneled uh, exits. Um, yeah, because this is in the northeast corner of the house. There's a uh, um, how many windows? There's three windows on the east wall. Does it look like I'm on the first floor or second? You're on floor? the second floor. You know that. You okay. know that. That's all right. Well, I I definitely reinforce ah, the door. Ah, you're doing is you, and while you hear a woman scream. You hear a woman screaming. You can't tell where it's coming from. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to hide under a table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the man with the seven initiative is done. Rock. Uh, I'm making my way to the library. Okay, you are in the library. I'm, and I'm at the window where we climbed into this library waiting for my companions. Okay. Veridel. All right, so... Kree and I are still engaged with Isabel. Um, I am attached to Veridel at this point. What I'd like to do, instead of swinging, can I um, can I down this vial that I have written down with scare quotes that says heal with a question mark? Uh, it's the thing we grabbed from the backpack in the uh, cave system. Okay, I gotta look that up. Um, 
<laughs> Sorry, I gotta I gotta look that up. I didn't write that shit down. You know, sometimes when you just just get that feeling it's not going to matter and you don't pay attention to what the character's carrying. Just kidding. Uh, hmm. It is refreshing water. It does nothing. Next. <laughs> <laughs> you quench your thirst. Um, I'm just going to call it a healing. It, it was a legit thing. I remember it wasn't a fakery like buying off of uh, Ogle, yeah. the alchemist. So uh, you're restored to full hit points. Oh, perfect. Okay. And then and maybe... So, You've taken your action. Uh, Okay, instead of movement, um, can I attempt like another shove? Um, basically, my intent would just be kind of push her towards the demon. No, you can. It's all it takes for you to hold her back with your shield and drink at the same okay. time and not miss your mouth. Fair enough. Fair if enough. you want to try to do this, I'll make you roll uh, a check to see if you drop the vial. No, no I'll, I'll sit tight. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Rourke, <laughs> Veridel. Scout, Labata, Labata. Uh, yeah, I'm tagging along with uh, Rourke. Okay, Rourke is by the window, yeah. ready to go. Um, as and uh, Cree. Cree. So. Mm. The creature is facing me. Um, okay. I slash at her, uh, trying to keep it away. And this was, uh, this was, uh, Claret? No, Isabel, I guess. Isabel, Isabel is attacking, uh, Veridel. Yeah. Okay, so you're attacking her from the back. That's what I did last round. Oh, that's right. She, she turned. turned to face you. Okay, sorry. I, I got to keep up. That's right. Uh, that's a 15. That's a hit. Roll damage. Six damage. <laughs> Under the cheek. Uh -huh. And as you notice that Claret turns around to face... Uh, Cree, uh, Faradel, uh, Claire is still just like hanging on your shield with one hand instead of two. But okay. still the same thing. The, the strength is incredible. All right. Okay. Reroll initiative. The demon go? No, the demon didn't go. Let's give the demon some. It's in a pitch battle with Rick Sanda. And so I got to do Rixanda and it. Okay, Rixanda misses. The demon gets a natural 20. Oh, yes. Nom, nom, nom. Okay. Um, and Rixanda takes four points of damage and shrieks. You mangy mutt! You should have been thrown out long ago! Okay, now we can roll initiative. Man, everybody's at the top. Yep, Veridel. <laughs> All right, I am going to stab Isabel with my short sword. Uh, 18 to hit. Real damage. Six damage. Ooh. 
That's that's what an assassin does. Yep. <laughs> yep. But she's not. Isabel's not paying attention to her. It's like when someone's trying to run at you and you have your hand on their head. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's kind of holding the shield like that while you're stabbing and uh, and intently looking to finish off Cree, like one at mm-hmm. a time type of situation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we went with Veridel, uh Scout. You are with Rourke. You guys are yes. cold lamping it, right? Just hanging by the window? Or what? No. Okay. Uh, when I reached the library, uh, I turn around and I realize that my buddies haven't arrived. Correct. So uh, I run back to help them out. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. So that takes us to any other sixes. Jacques. Do I see anything? I heard some laughter. I'm hiding under a table. No, you heard screaming. <laughs> laughter, laughter. So, <laughs> it sounds like laughter to me. I was... No, do I heard, do I heard screaming <laughs> from the, the combat or from No, from different? within the room. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just going to hide. Okay, continue. Okay, we're well, passing on Jake to... Cree. Nope, no, it's not Cree. It's, we, so we've done Jake, Veradel, and now it's at the fives. So, no, it's six. No, it's the demons and the ladies. Oh, right. Sorry, Jay. You're, you're at the Yeah, I'm in, in the top two. Okay, I get some. Um, Cree, you are attacked, and Isabel hits. Armor class 18. Yeah, that's a hit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's 13. Four. Three points of damage. Okay. And roll saving throw versus breath weapon. Oh, jeez. Versus breath weapon. That's a tough one. That's the worst. Okay. Nope. Okay. Your experience points. Uh oh. <laughs> Increase by <laughs> 100 points to get to level four. <laughs> okay, die. Sorry, uh, I'm running only the game you, for you, Jay. Only if you take six or more points of damage. Oh, only if six yeah, or more. Yeah, you only took three. I can't do it to you. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's only half. <laughs> That's a serious. Okay. Um, so I get fifty. Claret <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, moves to that was that was was that Yus- that was Isabel. Claret moves to attack the demon and hits. Okay, f- for minimal damage, the thing twists its weird neck. Uh, the demon attacks her back. This is... Um, Rixanda makes an attack. Hits. Do, 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 do. Four, two, three points to damage. Next, we're okay. That's all them. We're on the fives now. Rourke. Well, seeing Jock go back down the hall, I'm going to look down the hall with my sling. Can I? Is there a clear shot down the hall towards this chaotic melee, or is it just a mess down there? Um. You would have to, to get the room back in line of sight from the hallway, you would have to travel. First, you'd have to go across the room, Mm -hmm. which is 50 feet. And then it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet before you can look north to the room 
and you're looking at it and you're looking at the combat from 10, 20, 30, 40, 40, 55, 50 point, 50 feet away. I'm staying at the library. That's too far. Okay. Uh, I've got the football. Scout. You are in the you yep. are in the room, and um, you're looking at Ver the back of Veradell, and you see Cree and Veradell mixed up with Isabel and Claret. So are they all fighting in one big heap? Or yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. I, I, I tried to take a shot at the the hag closest to me. Okay, that would be is Isabel over Veradell's shoulder. Luckily, I'm pretty good at shooting balls. <laughs> Let's go, Legolas. <laughs> so I'm taking a careful aim and lose a shot at her. Uh, that's not good. I roll a one. Mm. Oh, oh, so I'm not going to... A I'm natural not gonna, one. I'm not going to verify the fumble. Hold on, I got, I got my... Oh. <laughs> Scout, roll a D100. You are just experiencing your first fumble of the game. Yay! Someone's got to be first, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I rolled 87. Uh, Veradell, you take an arrow to the back for eight points of damage. Oh! oh sorry. Jesus, sorry. fuck. On the fumble, isn't it roll to confirm the fumble? And I'm then... not doing it because uh, I am automatically making it a fumble because he's firing into gotcha. melee. I gotcha. It's yep. just a gut call. Yep. I, I am still standing. Barely. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! He staggered. He <laughs> staggered by a shaft to the lower back. She's she's been to the shield. For a minute, you feel like you think that there another um, undead dog has entered the room and has just ripped your, shredded your back. It feels so painful. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Jacques is still hanging out. Uh, uh, did I do all my attack? I have no idea where we are in the order. I think so. It was the same one where Gabriel didn't lose XP this time. Oh. Okay, we got to no, we uh, start. We got to start with this. Oh, no, it's uh, Rourke on five and and Cree on four. Um, you just did. Oh, so so it's you, under... Cree. It's you. No, it's Rourke. Rourke's not going anywhere. Uh, so yeah, he he was... passed. He decided he was like, ah, uh, oh, no. Okay, so it's me. Uh, okay, Sorry, uh, far I, away. <laughs> I keep, I keep um, swinging my dagger at the. Isabel creature. Seventeen on the dice. That's a hit. Okay, this is Claret. Uh, you got to attack Claret. She's in, engaging you. You can no longer do that backstab on Isabel. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. So, what, what's oh. your Claret thing? I thought she swung at the demon this last this last round. Yeah, she was. At no, the that's demon. Rixanda. Okay. Now that makes sense. Okay. Uh, three damage. She turned around. Got it. And that's it. Now we're on next initiative. I'm ready. Uh, Oh no. Jacques, you are not doing anything, correct? Oh no. I'm I'm gonna crawl out and grab a chair and throw it at a window and break it. And if it breaks, I'm gonna try and slowly crawl my way down. 
Okay. Uh, roll uh, roll open doors check with you. It's probably just one out of six. A two. Um, it it smashes. It cracks the glass, but the um, the lead molding that holds the individual paint, small panes in is still keeping the window intact. Kind of like a broken windshield. It's like twisted and then the, and then the, and the whatever. Whatever. The glazing. Use my hammer the glazing, kind of... the glazing, lead glazing is holding it intact. Okay. Okay. Well, unless, if I can't continue working on the window, I guess that's me. Okay. So now it's the the demon, the demon and the ghouls. Demon and ghoul, uh, demon and ghoul for Rexanda, Rexanda and the demon, and the demon fucking pummels her. And Rexanda is uh, is. Uh, hit so hard by the backhand that uh, of the demon that she falls down. And then um, Colorette attacks Cree and a total for six. I think that's going to be a miss. Yeah. Yisabelle is grinning now at Veradel. She can feel your life just on the edge, ready to be consumed. <laughs> like so many times before. Yeah. Fifteen. Ah. I hit a fifteen, that's a hit. Oh. One! I roll a one! Wow, I am still up with one hit point. Wow. Yeah, she goes. I'm going to rip off from Harry Potter. I want to see the lights go out in your eyes. <laughs> and it's a desperate situation. I need not say anymore. Veridel and Cree. Veridel and Cree, the heroes, standing ground. Oh no, and Ander. Oh yeah. yo, you you pummel you punished poor Ferdinand. Yeah, I think yeah. Ander's a splat. He he rolled after we all yeah. tallied up. No, he shot you in the back yeah, with an arrow. That was last oh, that's... round. That was last round. Oh, okay. It was yeah, so it's new round, but I, I rolled very late, so it's cool. Uh I'm a little shocked at shooting my buddy <laughs> back, so um do I have a clear shot at anything else here? No. No. Nope. You would have to 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 hit a target. You got to go to melee. I'm very sucky at melee, unfortunately. <laughs> one of those um, one of the hags got knocked to the ground, didn't she? Yep. she... Yeah. Okay. There's a juicy target. Prone to the right of the, to the right yeah. of the demon in the combat. There you go. She's yeah, trying to so get to her knees, I'll go too. For, I'll go for her. You got to hit an armor class 14. 17 plus 5. That's a good hit. Roll damage. Hey, Boom! Take nice. that. Headshot. The thing slumps like a zombie what? in The Walking Dead. You hit the head and it's over. Boom. Lights out. Cree, Veridel. Okay. Um <clears throat> Yeah, you go ahead. Good. I already wretched thing. Uh hmm. Wow, uh, that's a eleven on the dice. I don't think it hits. Eleven on the dice. Mm -hmm. And you got your bonuses. Yeah, her. Uh, uh no, Clarette's uh armor class is seventeen. Oh. 
They're 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 all different. Each one of these things has a different armor class. Um, all right. So I'm hurt badly. What I'd like to do uh, with Isabel, like kind of trying to reach like on my shield, can I use that as leverage and basically let her have the shield and like push off of her and then run is what I'd like to do. Yes. And you got in withdrawal. Kind yeah. Of thing. And you need to, her armor class is 12. So that's your 12 or greater to pull it off. All right. Hmm. Cool. I rolled a one. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so, so, I, um, uh, yeah, roll a d20. 18. Okay, roll a d100. Damn. He got the car him so. 66. Okay, she laughs when, when you try to do that. And with holding the shield, she goes, wham, slams you, like, you know, swings you on, into the wall. Boosh! And then while you're trying to, while you're dazed um, and concussed, uh, she steps up to you with her terror glance, and you must roll save versus breath weather. I save 15. Okay. She tries to paralyze you with her um, terror glance, and uh, you withstand it. <laughs> Next round, that's it. Seen it all. Unless anyone's seen it all before. I think that's it, unless so anyone else has got something. So he's paralyzed? No, no, he's saved. No. Oh. I, I lost my shield. I could not. Okay. I didn't move, but I was not paralyzed. Yeah, you lost the shield. Okay. She kind of, yeah, like winged you, and you went off like I don't know, like a frog on a tennis racket or something. Oh. Yee! Not good. Not good. So, guys, I have to leave now because I have kids to pick up. Sadly, so I will remain at the door to fire arrows, and yeah. Okay. So I hope you have a good time. Good to meet you, Anders. See you. Yeah, the same. Very good. Hey, Great you. game today. And uh, sorry, Stu. <laughs> no, sorry. Right. Stu, could I get an in game real time check? What time is it? Uh, so, 11, uh, 11, 12 Eastern. So. Uh, so it's ten. Ten Mountain Time. Uh, it's twelve. 10, you're too behind. Right. So take care, uh, everyone. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah, so I think it's nine mountain. Two behind. You can, how did time zones make work? Me get out of my chair. I'm ten fifteen central. Okay, it's nine fifteen. Nine fifteen. Okay, perfect, perfect. No, I thought I had no idea of the time. It just seemed to be flying by. Good, good. We got a lot of game. Just making sure. Because uh, I was just thinking of the scout. What I got to do to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, so everyone finish rolling your initiative please i've got i've got veridel and jock and, oh, and the creatures and rocks a two he's a two jock you were up the hammer of dryfith i'm going to take it and start bashing out the lead molding of the window one hit and it's out yeah. Can I can I begin descending carefully because I'm feeling pretty sick? Yep. 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 All right. Uh, Chalk. And now it's uh, Cree. Nope. It's the demon. Sorry. The demon attacks Claret in the back. Yes. <laughs> and hits. For damage, ah, a one, one point of damage. Okay, Claret attacks you, Cree, 
and hits an armor class eight. So that's a fail. Uh, and uh, Isabel um, is still trying to destroy your mind with her terror glance. So make another save. All right. Uh, I did not save. Roll d6. Four. Uncontrollable weeping. <laughs> Sounds about right. So now you're just crying in fear, like it's just like the uh, chicken alien in the in the uh, black dude saying, "Move out of the way! Move out of the way!" And she's just like, ah, before the, the the alien eats her head. That's kind of what's going on. And she's slavering too. She's drooling like that. Maybe I'll even get her a little extended maw, too. It's coming right out. Like, ah, I can suck a mouth. Okay, who's next? It's me. Go, Crete. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm attacking uh, Claret, right? Repeat that, please. I'm attacking Claret. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'd say, say uh, there's a demon behind you. <laughs> <laughs> um, she turns around. <laughs> uh, roll a reaction roll. Oh, uh, natural twenty. Yeah! Yes. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. And what are you, you stabbing with a dagger? Yes. With the uh, magic dagger or the. With a fancy, fancy dagger. dagger, yep. And hold on, let me uh, let me give you. I think I can give you something for this. Uh, Wait a minute. Oh, those are okay. Oh, sorry, I can't. Uh, stick it in the, in the neck, and uh, and um, and just like get it in there and cut it enough so her head falls sideways. Like nearly headless Nick. Whoa. Yes. Hmm. And that drops her jazz. Yes, it does. Nice. That's what it is done, Demon. <laughs> Rourke, what are you doing? You're still there because it's too far away. Veridel. Uh I I feel like I should run back no, to no, the, it's been going, where, where, it, you're looking at where your is watch? Every, it's like, where is everybody? I, it's like, what <laughs> the hell? Hey, that's probably the sign. That yeah, it's been like whooping. three rounds, four rounds. Yeah, four rounds. I'll run that's back down a... the hall. I have a I have a plan if I can, you can get hear there. The, the screams and the... Yeah, the weeping. The weeping, <laughs> and the, <laughs> the, weeping the wailing, the gnashing of teeth. <laughs> Um, do I lose my round, Jay? Yes, very much so. Uh, we roll initiative again. Okay. All right. If I come on, I get to get at the top here. Oops. Christ. Oh, Jesus. Shot. Okay, I'm going to begin descending the edge of the house. Can I make it down this yep. round? Okay, I'm going to hit the turf of the yard and uh, kind of crouch and get my surroundings. Okay, uh, it's the, the... The daylight nighttime situation hasn't changed. You know, oh, okay. so it's... it's um, you have... The bit of the drizzle, a little bit of the gray ground fog drifting over the hedge maze, as you can see over the broken grassy ground. Or you can see a few, a couple of outbuildings. No sounds of birds or anything, and the grounds are deathly still. All you can hear is okay. the shrieks and the yells from up in the house, as if okay. someone's any... being butchered alive. Okay, <laughs> got it. That's just. Uh, it's me, Roll six. Okay. Um, 
So, Isabel is the is, only one like, left standing. Is the only one like she's sober? Vargil. Yep, yep. She seems to be pretty intent. Like, like she's okay. locked on to this is her prey and this is what she will devour today to sustain her undead hunger. And I'm gonna the fetid breath, the weeping, the red screaming. The throwing of the head back and forth. Ah! Oh, come on. Oh. I no luck. Damn. You miss? Now roll. It's it's a three. No, no. It's a plus one plus the backstop. That's eight. Yeah, armor class 12. Um, yeah. So. I'm going to, uh, I think I'm next. I'm going to cast Prismatic Spray from the scroll. In, uh, what could go wrong? Yep. And uh, with the, the, f the focus on Isabel, the hag that's about to devour Veridale. Okay. I, and I don't think the Prismatic Spray... In, in play. Isn't it Jack Rune's excellent prismatic spray? Yes, he is. Yes, yep. <laughs> How do I determine this? Yeah, it's going to be, there's no one else, but yep. Uh, um, a rainbow of color, <laughs> colors in a flat plane spring from your hand. And roll a d8. D8. I've got one of those. An eight. Okay. Roll twice again, ignoring any eights. I need two numbers, but re-roll the eights. Gotcha. A one. And a six. Now, here's the pain in the ass thing. The prismatic spray is listed in the illusionist spells seventh level. And it tells me what colors you got a one and I apologize before I forget a one and a what? A one and a six. A one and a six. And that hits red and indigo. The red and indigo, indigo rays uh, mm -hmm. hit her. But I got to go find the prismatic sphere to find the eight listed, the seven listed things that happen. So that's what I'm doing right now. If anyone can beat, beat okay. me up. Yeah, here it is. Okay. What the hell? And a six. Yep. Okay, save versus wander insane. She's already insane. But uh but it was a searing, searing slice of light that crackled and singed. And, uh, and almost cut her in half, so she's turning and looking at you in fury. That'll get her attention. <laughs> yep, and... Uh, it's your turn. Yep, okay. The demon and her. The demon attack. Isabel attacks Rourke. Oh, that's a 12-sided dice. That's not going to work. You could roll that one. My armor, <laughs> class, is my armor class is 13. I'm, I'm fine. I get a 19. Uh, shit, fuck. Uh, so she uses her powerful claw-like hands to give you seven points of damage. Dare right. touch me with your magic, sorcerer. There's a place in hell reserved for you. And then the demon attacks Claret. 
This fucking demon. I, mean, I thought Claret was dead from the knife wound. Oh yeah, that's right. K and, K and I. What's she got left to attack then? Isabel. Yes. Isabel, as, as she goes. Oh, is she the last? Uh, is she the last one standing? Yeah, yeah. So the demon leaps at uh, Isabel. And hits. And fucking rip the bites her in half. And the dead yes. flesh pieces scatter on the floor and just like a pulpy mess. Like BAM! Infected the, the jaws because she kind of shatter her like a green. So there's pieces of undead flesh all over the room. You gotta wipe it off. You're done weeping. You're not weeping anymore. There we go. Alright. Um, cure light wounds for Veridel. Yeah, I mean, I, I do we need to stay in initiative at this point, Jay? Is this demon hostile towards us, or ah, no? The uh, the demon says, um, at, at your wish, as it such was my command, and now I've completed my task. I shall be going now. The demon, the demon, yeah, I'm not the gonna, demon takes I'm not us. Gonna, yeah, it would be better. It would be best if he left now. It kind of it goes. <laughs> yeah. It's like please yeah, go. Just saying things like I've completed the pack. I am free to go. Finally to leave this horrid plane with these fleshy beats, <laughs> and then slowly fades into a swirl. Shh, pop, gone. Oh man. All right, cure light wounds, Veridel, before you Thank die. You. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, four points, it looks like. All right. All right. Back at half, at least. That's good. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Through the library window. I've got the books. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And as you head into the... Uh, which way are you gonna you gonna which way you're heading into the hedge maze? I guess you got four ways to go, any compass direction. Yeah. I was gonna stagger to the south at the fountain. Is, have we looked at that before? Yeah, because you walked by it. Okay. That's in, that because that's in the front of the house. You walked and you walked by that when you guys came in. Yeah. I'm gonna go get some is there water in it? Uh <laughs> I thought we had a thing already with not drinking or eating things in this place. Okay. <laughs> a circular pool in the center of an ornate fountain carved from bluish stone. All right. While they're climbing down, I'm going to be uh, splashing some of that water on my the wounds. The pool once mm. contained water that has long since dried oh. up, leaving behind only a thin layer of sediment and dead leaves. The fountain okay. is a Y'all three see me staring into the fountain forlorn looking for water. <laughs> and then it springs to life, spewing a greenish liquid. It's a carving of uh, the sculpture is a carving of four hippocampuses. And as you're looking for oh, the hippocampus, as you're looking forlornly at the the dried leaves and going, oh, there's nothing. A uh, a, a greenish liquid um, pours from the mouths of the hippocampus, um, and it starts filling up the pool. The liquid looks as if it was uh, water thick with algae. I'm going to run away. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's your call. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm moving back towards the smithy. So anyways. The smithy. Okay, that, so that's, that's west. So you're walking west past the fountain, past the front gate. Um, where is everybody else? Uh, they're down on the ground now outside. They can oh, see you. I cannot believe y'all survived that demon. I was... Pretty sure it was going to kill every one of you and eat your bones. What's the hags that were the. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to scowl. The it's, guy it's with a the, hobby. the magic it's hammer a hobby running you. away. Yeah. All right. I pitch it to you guys. There's no reason for me to talk right now for a while. I'll listen to what you plan and what you're doing. I think we need to get these books back to Lord Enslex, right? Yeah. And, I'm uh, just sweating and my arm is bleeding. I've kind of got a rag tied How are you doing it. on hit points? There. I'm just leaning on the hammer, just barely standing up. 
are you like one of of a few or one of eight one of eight okay cure light wounds for jack uh five points yeah actually i didn't know you were that wounded i, I will I will at least judge you. Well, yeah, he got, he got ravaged by Kuzo. No, that was the dog that bit him as he shut the door. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, okay, actually, yeah. Never mind. Judgment restored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your strength point returns. Okay. Jake, your strength point returns. Ooh. After 10 minutes, it was a temporary effect. <laughs> While you wear a strange red hat and you speak foreign tongues and you bring foul demons, I appreciate your healing. I feel much better. And I kind of retch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there seems to be fresh water over there in the fountain. I wasn't brave enough to drink it. None of us are. We'll leave this cursed place. Okay, the hedge maze takes not nearly as long to get through get through as it did getting in. It's as if uh, you can't pick a not pick a right right direction, and so you're quickly through the hedge maze, past the old stone wall, and now you're into in the forest of Averon, about two miles away from the cemetery. Oh, also, it's uh, when you come out of the hedge maze, um, it's a it's. It's um, actually it's an it's late autumn when you guys came here, like in October. But it's so it's a little brisk and cold, but it's um, it's a bright sunny day with a few clouds and a light and a light breeze. And it's at the time but of day very... that uh, Jacques and the scout would have anticipated. Has the has the sun risen yeah. or is it still? Yeah, in the... no, it's like you've walked out when you come out of the hedge maze through the gate it's like what it's supposed to look like gotcha and so how long ever you were in there like it's before noon gotcha and okay. didn't lord asilex take us like to a hunting cabin or something when we cemetery first... it was the cemetery yeah, was where a... we first where we first yeah. met him well that's not where he met you that's where he took you he, he met you by the side right. of the road and then he took you uh because right. it was a place to keep dry right the crack, the the ruined mausoleum had uh, some roof left that they gave you a drive. I'd say I'd say we head back to the cemetery. I mean, that's one place that we know. I mean, Asilex left us, right? I mean, he said, "Go get my books." Go get my books and... You didn't see him leave. He just wasn't there in the morning. He wasn't present in the morning. Gotcha. And if he really is that powerful, maybe he knows right. that something might have changed at the house if. Isabel Phil. He wasn't there, and and um, and obviously you were in some kind of magical twilight. Would be the two things I would mention. Say. Okay. Does anybody have the map of Averon? Hmm. Because no. this ranger has been getting lost for a month, walking around this place. He's supposed to be from here. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, yeah, uh, Lord Ancelex is um, his horse is tied off near, off in a like a, a wire, a, a metal piece of piece of low fencing by some tottering tombstones, and um, and he's just uh, um, and he's uh, just brewing tea, and he's sitting and he's leaning against the. Uh, the floor of the mausoleum, the ruins, what's left. And so his tea set is kind of like at his at shoulder level or a little lower. Mm -hmm. Um and he and he um he and offers a and he offers a cup of tea for the returning victorious heroes. I'll imbibe it in that in a cup of tea. At least it's boiled water. And what, what is the what does this guy look like? Um, he looks uh, well dressed for. He looks like he's dressed like a lord and a gentleman in in um, in fine tailored rugged outdoors clothes, like riding. Like and I've never seen him before. Nope, right? Nope. He has long straight black hair. His skin is a little pale. Um, 
though he's always feels in the act of like he's well rested his his eyes are red rimmed like he hasn't slept in ages he probably hasn't and he's and his clothing's black or dark isn't it yeah 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 he, he's got, a flash, of, from when he's we got met a flash him. of maroon on his vest or sash underneath um his vestments or coat and then which is over which has a cloak over it but now since it's daylight his sleeves are rolled up and his cloak is over his horse, saddle of the horse. Mm -hmm. And it, the, and the, and it has, the tea has a rich vanilla smell to it. Vanilla and lavender. Well, we've recovered those books you asked us to fetch from the library. <clears throat> and the tenants have been evicted. Though I'm sad to say that when we pierce the veil of the sanctum on the second story, we found a bound demon and a, and a long dead corpse. And Angelix raises his eye and goes, Look. And I set the books down, say, What's so important about these anyway? It's kind of flipping the cover and maybe trying to catch a peek. Yeah, yeah, you've already examined them, so I gave you what mm -hmm. you think they are. Um, he goes, that's none of your concern. The deal has been struck. I've asked you to retrieve and the books. Um, then you would be free, free to go from my summoning spell. That was the deal. <laughs> was it not? Do yes, this for me and that, I send you, that, you, you, had, home. you had summoned us here to perform some errand for you, which we have performed. And yes, I could suggest that now we are, we have fulfilled our, our end of the bargain. Very good. Our end of the ritual. Very good. Our business is complete. You are free to go. And he starts, he starts packing up his tea set. <laughs> Oh, were we not free to go before? What the <laughs> I know. It's like this very like implied, like, I'm such mm. a powerful sorcerer. I summoned you here. <laughs> oh, he, so as he's packing up, he explains the summoning ritual. The summoning ritual promises to bring me A that I need. Um, and then upon a, a, achieving achieving the goal, you'll come with, with what I need. And upon achieving your goal, um, uh, you will be released and you will go back from where you came from. That's that's the spell. Mm -hmm. He continues packing up, and he goes, "I'm sure, quite shortly, you will find yourself where you're supposed to be." That's how that's how this the spell works. That's how magic works. I don't know how you're getting back. The spell does the work, right? And now he's taking his kit and he's walking towards his horse, and he's putting the books in the saddlebags. And he goes, could you give me your names? Because such fine and doughty heroes that could achieve such an amazing feat um, will want to be toasted to in the nearest tavern tonight when I raise my glass to your success. And so he's basically asking your names. I'm not telling him my name. So you're, you're, <laughs> you're grousing. Yeah. Oh, there's... sir. I am the coward Jake. These are my good friends. So uh, we have Rourke, Bree, and uh, the man with the arrow in his back. I never got his name. Oh, and of course, my good companion, Le Batard. Um, um, and he doesn't wear a hat, but he does give that, like, you know, the sweeping bow from his saddle as you know, he climbs up the horse. And he goes, um, yeah, he goes, he'll, he'll praise your name. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, just, it considers you whatever benignly. I can't think of what I want to say. Uh, and he turns his horse and heads towards the forest. So, uh, assassinate. It's a black. It's a it's a black horse. <laughs> He's got the black horse, the maroon livery. Um, um, now you can look closely on like the reins of the horse while you're while he's talking to you and getting on. It has, you know, strange visageism. Uh, you know the 
when not the saddlery, but the reins, the lariats, whatever they call them, the hoops. <laughs> oh, don't forget, his name is Veridel. Oh, <laughs> I'll uh, slowly walk behind Jake. <laughs> Okay, he's. I mean, he's. He's just trotting on a horse, so he's he's into the forest. Are you going to continue to pursue him? I don't. I mean, we, I, we do have the amulet and the ring to show for it. Yes, I'll right? give you the value because that's XP you can you can uh, enjoy right now. If you want, unless you want to wait. No, no, we'll take the XP. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to force you to, you know. And no, 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 is play. Oh. I just shout. So we just wait here for the magic to work? <laughs> here, there, anywhere. It will happen. Pick a direction to go. I'm sure it will. Fate has bound you, and fate will deliver you. The amulet, gold amulet, is worth 1,500 gold. Mm. And the signet ring is worth a thousand. And um, okay, and that's XP that we can divide by five, right? Yes. It's like twenty five hundred by five is five hundred around. Yep. So there you go, Cree. Your next level. Roll your hit points. <laughs> if you failed that save you would have been more than a miserable son of a bitch you probably would have quit my game <laughs> Listen, our game oh, you would have quit quest. our game I'm sorry a dungeon master in his elected position this is our game not mine <laughs> I am on a miserable quest to slay the beast of Avaron that's been plaguing the villagers up and down our fair country and if destiny is what you're looking for perhaps we should go on this miserable quest where we will surely all die we've only suffered one casualty uh in your absence um but that, this is my suggestion i i don't think anything bad could possibly happen and maybe the abbey is the best place to go um, but you don't know anything about this beast or where it makes its lair. We were sent on a quest to get the hammer of Jifra mm -hmm. to slay it, and I have the this hammer. This is a self-motivated quest. What? I am ill-equipped to use this hammer. You have taken this Better. job uh, duty upon yourself. No one said, "Hey, Ranger, go find this beast." You've heard the rumors. A self-imposed okay. miserable quest. Uh -huh. Trying to find some sort of, you know, meaning to my pitiful peasant existence, wandering these <laughs> these forests, uh, and you know, I thought my life was bad, but then I I see the riffraff before me. So I'm glad you're here that we can go on this quest together. I'm a little puzzled at like, do we actually expect to just magically get teleported back? Like I have. I have a doubt. Um, right. I think we were just instruments of convenience for Lord Arax, right? He yeah. cast a summoning spell, and we just happened to conveniently pass through this gate, which brought us into a service. I, I really mean, should have him when he was packing up. He says, he says, that, <laughs> well, he says it was just, he was trying to explain, like, it was just dumb luck that you, that you were the chosen one. I cast the spell. The magic knows what I need, and that will appear. You know, a donkey could have appeared, right. a potted plant, um, but it was you. Right. So we, there are a couple of spells still on the scroll that might help us in whatever direction we choose to next proceed. There's a traveling spell and an, an erring direction spell. Well, you had three spells so, on the scroll, and I thought you cast two. I, I think there were... Okay. Possibly, Possibly four. four. Yep, you could be we, right. We found the note. We found the note in the Discord. Okay, um, cool. And they were, they were, they were described as unerring direction, 
traveling prismatic spray and phase which i think was phase yep. door mm -hmm. and um we've cast two of them so far phase door and prismatic spray i think we still have an unerring direction and a traveling spell but we don't know what they do or how we they don't work. know what the traveling spell does right uh I, no he said the phase door is a powerful traveling spell oh that was the yeah, that was yeah, the traveling yeah, so spell that's right. So okay. you got un so it's unerring you have direction. Unerring direction. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Just probably the way I captured it mm -hmm. in the note, right? And uh, if you and you know this because he was explaining it to you how it works is if you can if you can picture some place that you have been, the spell will give you the direction to get there. Right. And once again, this was all random, guys. I did not put this together but it all neatly <laughs> puts together in some form you had you... yeah but that's the best way that's the best way i know no it's psyched it's so cool it's so cool man. i'm i'm gonna wear the amulet and the ring okay rack's gonna put put them on does the amulet have any kind of sigil or mark and, and you said the ring had some sort of marking on it as well yeah it's a signet um it looks like uh it uh a like maybe some heraldry you saw in the house while you were there it looks uh, like a uh family and selects heraldry yep. and the amulet the amulet um is just quite beautiful you know, it has precious gems it's, and is, you know, it's, it's, it's what you use to buy a manor. Kind of strange that he didn't claim. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tell him about it either. Oh, okay. okay. Well, maybe you now own the manor. Because you have I guess we could go back and explore the manor. I mean, the tenants have been evicted, right? The at least the three, three hags. Um, I cannot aid you. I have right? not yet broken the barrier to step across the, uh, the threshold of my ancestral home. I had to punt and go for these, these books. So, um. I know I wanted you to guys to go that night, but that just is because that night was when, uh, you know, the house of Ancelux, uh, touches the material plane. And, oh. and, and last night was the night that it does it. Um, Kevin, we're still rocking. Um, oh. and so what was he saying? Hi, Kevin. Um, he will have to he will have to go research and see where he can anticipate um the house will appear next time and place he had that picked for that night at this location uh it would be present and if he cast a spell he would be able to you know he was in the place where he needed to be to try to break the curse okay. to get in the house and then when you talked about the hair tricks he said well i'm gonna have to get to that later do this for me. Um, so if we were to go back to the where the manor was, it wouldn't we we shouldn't expect to find it. You there, will see I the think. crumbling ruin that you were looking at in the oh. evening when he first showed it to you. So yes, that sprawling mm. manor. If you went back, it would no longer be there. It would just be the ruins that any Averonian would be familiar with. Right. Um, so now, so now that I mean, all that um, dawn has passed and the sun goes up. Yeah, so. yeah, it's just before noontime. He was having he was having mid morning tea. Okay. It looks like a regular old autumn day in Averone. The trees, the trees are turning. The foliage is quite nice. 
it has that invigorating little bite to the air. So, okay, so Jack, you're, you know, you're a local. So where, where do we go? Where's the nearest village? Where do we? Well, if we travel we can get out a, to the road, uh, we'll find Vion's. And then we can uh, take a trail to the southwest to San Zinabi. That's not where the Abbey is. That's not out. where the Abbey is. Where's the Abbey? Um, okay, it's time to decide where the Abbey is. I'm going to look at the map. I will tell you because you will you will know this because this is local knowledge. Oh, I just saw Paragon, and you said it was the Abbey. Oh, Paragon, sorry, so. sorry. Yes, you are right. Yes, you are correct. You're on it. The ranger knows more about his locale than the dungeon master does. That's good. It's as it should be. As it should be. <laughs> I, I lost. I lost the thread there. So you said that I, uh, the the beast. There was some weird murders dealing with the Abbey of the Paragon. The Abbot of the Abbey has been on tour to the poor villagers, relieving their suffering. Right. And interesting enough. The murders were all in places that he had recently been. It's not every place he's been, but wherever there's been a murder, he had been there the day before. So that was the trail, okay. but you and didn't I'm... know who it was when he said that it's the, the abbot. They, you know, it comes from the abbey. There you go. You put it together. So... so... I, I'm. They are not familiar, but I'm going to describe about what's been happening with this beast of Avaron. Could could you give them a little bit of background? I think I just did. Okay, that, it's a, in a village, there you go. There you villages go. have been randomly hit by some unknown beast that uh, uh, has killed has killed people at night in their homes. Outside is the nearest village, uh, Vion. Vion no, there's a um, there's a local village. What did how many miles did I say it was? There's a local village or a hamlet or what do you say a cottager place about um, four miles away was the nearest one. It was either four or twelve, I think four. We'll split it. It's eight. It's eight miles away, and it is in it is to the northwest. It's basically the one you came from. So we we found this weapon, the Hammer of Dryfirth. I don't know why I have it. Everyone knows I'm a coward, although I'm not nearly as weird or as ugly as the rest of you. Um, maybe we should go to the nearest village and see if there's been any murders recently or any clues about uh, uh, where the beast may have been. You all seem directionless. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you're with them now. You happen they debouch on the on the on that on that dirt road that runs from the village towards Viones and 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 skirts the ruins of Mount Boy where they just were. Okay. Well, this is um Can you yep, hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, yeah we hear you fine. 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 Yeah, sorry. Just double checking that because my dog's just gone off on one again. Uh, okay, so, so basically, this 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 unknown creature is attacking villages after the abbots come through. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Has anyone had a word with the abbot about this? Who are you? That would help, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. Hey, there's a person here. Yes, straight yeah, where did it come from? It just pops out of the woods. That sounds like an interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> Quit creeping. I was stuck in the privy for a while. I just wanted to. Hey, go. Kevin, because this is the game. Yes. That this, if you pick the god from Petty Gods, you get a 250 bonus next week for using the god from Petty Gods. I don't have Petty Gods, so no, no, I didn't. Um, I'm trying to encourage people to use OSR stuff that are out there. What can I do? I know, my I hands are tied. My hands are tied. <laughs> Everyone else? I think I, I will uh, look for it at some point. Okay. But that's a nice little resource for some like um, lesser deities and demigods. Thank you.
published a few years ago. I think it's, I don't know if it's free or not. It's worth looking at. I mean, it's, if, if that's kind of your jam. But Kevin, yeah. you know, what's your character's name in class? Uh, his name is Top Mahalem. guys are outside um basically you're in the hex where malnabones malna boy malina boy i don't know how to say french i don't know how to speak french malinbois Malinbois. thank you gabriel it's very elegant malinbois the ruins of malinbois and so la frenia la frenia is uh the closest village that's uh just la over Frenet. what's that eight sixteen twenty four miles away and Vionis mm-hmm. is whatever, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40 miles. Vionis is 40 miles away. So that Malinois, they are, it's a, it's a, they are ruins or it's, it's a, ruins. Um, it's, okay, so we have to go to La Frené, La Frené, mm-hmm. maybe, um, that's the nearest village? Yes, it is. Okay. And I think that's the village Jake came from, where he last was. Listen, uh, you weirdos from another place, uh, from probably Canada or someplace, um, I will offer my services to you, you disgusting <laughs> foreigners. Um, gosh, I – sorry. Uh, I, actually, I'm not sorry. Um, it's just – that's how I think. It's how we look. Anyways, we will go to uh, La Frenet and we'll get uh, – we have baguettes there. Uh, it's a, a bread. It's it's food. Um, I will sell my services.